Jedi Survivor is a game that conveys various things to me. On one hand, I think it very much incorporates the Star Wars element in many aspects, such as characters, new lightsabers, and a story that I find quite decent. The characters feel like they belong in the Star Wars universe, with distinct personalities and roles that contribute to the overall narrative. The new lightsabers add a fresh visual appeal and gameplay variety, keeping the combat interesting and visually stunning. However, after playing it again months after its release, there are undoubtedly certain points that didn't quite convince me. Some gameplay mechanics felt outdated or underdeveloped, which detracted from the overall experience. That's why in this video, I decided to share my complete experience with the game, in case you were thinking of playing it or wanted to know what it's about. Jedi Survivor is a game that looks great. At launch, the performance on PC turned out to be terrible, with numerous bugs and glitches that significantly affected the gameplay. Many players reported crashes and performance issues that hindered their enjoyment of the game. But in my case, playing it on PlayStation 5, I didn't feel it was that bad. The PlayStation 5 version seemed more stable, allowing me to immerse myself in the game without too many technical distractions. That said, the game and its landscapes managed to surprise me. Without a doubt, exploring the various planets and cities within the game manages to convey the exact vibe of this universe. The environments are richly detailed and capture the essence of Star Wars, making exploration a visually rewarding experience. Curiously, the most negative aspect I found was precisely in this exploration of its worlds. Once nothing happens, twice neither. It's completely normal, but when I find myself eight times searching for videos to solve the various puzzles in the game, something is wrong. The frequency and complexity of the puzzles became a significant barrier to progression, disrupting the flow of the game. And before you say anything, I'm not the only one. A large number of players are in the same situation. This widespread issue suggests a fundamental flaw in the game's design, and I don't understand why many of the puzzles and levels are constructed in such a way that even the most experienced detective couldn't decipher them. The difficulty of the puzzles seemed disproportionately high compared to the rest of the game. Some puzzles are so convoluted that it's impossible to reach the conclusion on your own. They often required obscure solutions that were not intuitive or logical, and I want to repeat that this was my personal experience. I suppose there are others who enjoyed this challenge, seeking answers and wandering around the map. For some players, the intricate puzzles might add to the game's appeal, providing a sense of accomplishment when solved. And I'm not saying that the system of this game is all bad, but if I compare it with other games, for example in the new God of War, its puzzles don't bother me at all. The puzzles, although challenging, seemed fair and rewarding, but Jedi Survivor is a game that managed more than once to make me pause everything and go to YouTube to find a solution for the part I was at. This frequent need to consult external guides broke immersion and was frustrating. And it's not uncommon. Many of us turn to YouTube or the internet for help when we're stuck at some level or part of a video game. The problem is, when this becomes a routine for every planet and level of the game. This reliance on external help highlights a design flaw in the game's puzzle mechanics. I don't want to be a hater, but I wanted to get all this out at the start because it was the aspect I enjoyed the least, especially considering that I paid for a Star Wars game. And the last thing I want is to spend 30 minutes solving a puzzle rather than fighting enemies with my lightsaber. The expectation for a Star Wars game is more action-oriented gameplay, not extensive puzzle solving. And now I want to talk about the positives. They decided to keep most of the abilities we acquired in the first game from the beginning, which I find very appropriate. This continuity respects the player's previous progress and avoids redundant gameplay. Having to redo everything and unlock the same abilities would be entirely wrong in my opinion. It would have felt like unnecessary repetition. However, they have now added new combat styles, where we can even use the blaster, combining it with our lightsaber. The inclusion of new combat styles adds depth and variety to the gameplay making combat encounters more dynamic and engaging. The different combats with the enemies and the system itself I like. Let's say it's an improvement compared to the first part, even being difficult on some occasions without being something out of this world. The combat system strikes a balance between challenge and accessibility. So yes, this part does turn out to be interesting. The enhancements in combat mechanics make fights more thrilling and strategic. Regarding Cal Kestis and the other characters, I feel a great evolution, especially in Cal, as this time, we will have a more mature and powerful facet of him, where his abilities indeed improve compared to the first game's story. His character development is evident and adds depth to the narrative. Now Cal will face new challenges, and here comes a spoiler, even the temptation of the dark side. This darker aspect of his journey adds an intriguing layer to his character. I loved all this, 
and the only regret is that they explore all this at the end of the game. I suppose if they make a third part, we already know what it will be about. This narrative thread sets up potential storylines for future games. We will also meet new characters in this second part and see others we already knew. The antagonists provide a credible threat and drive the plot forward. It has some plot twists that I think any fan of the saga will like, and I feel the plot has a good rhythm, being quite entertaining most of the time. It manages to keep you wondering what will happen next, and the flashbacks and side stories complement the main story well. These elements enhance the storytelling and provide a fuller understanding of the game's world. Having clarified all this, I don't think it's a bad game. Despite its flaws, Jedi Survivor offers a compelling experience. As I said, I consider it has many things I liked, but I do believe they could have done better in some aspects. Because if we talk about innovation, it's more of an improvement of the first game, implementing new weapons, outfits, hairstyles, and new mechanics but evidently preserving the basics of Jedi Fallen Order. The game builds on the foundation of its predecessor, introducing new elements while maintaining core mechanics. So if you like Star Wars, it could be a very good game for you, in which I think its main character, Cal Kestis, takes the spotlight. At this point, I don't know if they will make a third game, but the ending seems to indicate that it could be. The potential for a sequel is suggested, which could further explore Cal's story. It would undoubtedly be very interesting to see Cal Kestis in a Star Wars series or movie. They could certainly take advantage of that opportunity to show us more of him. His character has the potential to be explored in other media, or maybe they are saving him for a future game. In any case, I think the idea and the story presented are very decent, and if they improve the negative aspects I mentioned before, they could easily make one of the best Star Wars games. Addressing the game's shortcomings could elevate it to the top tier of Star Wars games. But what do you think? Do you agree with what I said? Let me know your opinions in the comments, and if you made it to the end, don't forget to subscribe and leave a like to support the channel. I really appreciate it. That's all from me, and I hope to see you next time.